pieces together. And for the final presentation of today, geoethics and geo resources. Alexander, over to yourself. Okay, um, nice to talk on this uh, end of the afternoon in, uh, from Portugal. Thanks for accepting me uh, due to all these different issues related with uh, computers and uh, internet. I was with problems getting uh, the presentation, but it's, it's, it's ready for that. So I, I just want to share some of uh, our work that we are developing in, uh, in Portugal and is related with geoethics and geo resources. And we are working in this uh, project called Goal. So we have the geo geoethics outcomes and awareness learning that is a co-funded Erasmus uh, project from uh, Europe. And um, we decide to, in our um, department, to put some energy on this because we felt that it's really important to explain uh, to the people what is going on with the um, job resources and why we need them in order that we can uh, work in our research. So first, I would like to talk about a little about conflict of interest because I'm a teacher here at the University of Porto and um, you can have uh, access to all my interests in research uh, by my web page. You can see in which uh, department I work, which institution, um, what are my uh, PhD students, my master students. You have access to almost everything, but some people don't know, but I have also the conflict of interest in the um, materials that I use. For instance, I have a smartphone, uh, like most of you, and uh, I drive an electric car like this one that is here. So um, I'm really interested in raw materials because I'm using them all the time. And this is the first thing that the people need to understand when, when we talk about conflict of interest, is about everything. So, uh, in January the last year, we had the first workshop related with these geo resources and uh, uh, geological, um, geological resources and geoethics. And uh, we chose the, the, the example of the lithium from hard rock because uh, as I will try to explain in a few moments, uh, but before that, I, I organized the thing just to have a quick look why I chose the lithium from hard rock. It's because I did my PhD uh, 20 years ago. I finished them uh, in, um, in Northern Portugal about uh, lithium and uh, later, I start my uh, research and my uh, um, way in the faculty. I participate in many, many different H 2020 projects like FAME project. There, I mean, uh, new wars, development of new models about uh, lithium, for instance, with a lot of different uh, institutions. Uh, at the moment, we are working in Adamin to project called Lights that is used the exploration from satellites to um, ground uh, portable equipments in order to have almost no contact with the, the, the tree rain before um, the mining, because before the mining, we need to do exploration. And for the exploration, we can use from satellites to drones to portable elements uh, uh, portable equipments like uh, uh, portable lips, and at this moment we never touch the, the 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 ground and the rock, and it's only exploration. It's only to research and to do the the study about uh, our uh, terrain. And uh, very recently we uh, we have a kickoff in June this year. We have the project Greenpack, that is a age 2020 project for four years that will start this June. And uh, it's 
similar but uh, with uh, different approaches like uh, using geophysical from uh, helicopters and other things. Tomorrow Francis will hope that uh, uh, explain that um, she is in charge of the social impact that this kind of uh, um, exploration related with pegmatites and lithium pegmatites are included on these ones. And uh, so we gonna do research on this area for a long time in my department and with my team. And it's why we decided to explain to people that uh, why we uh, need uh, lithium. And about that, I just want to make a quick uh, overview about the lithium resources. Until, let's say, 2016, 17, when the, the, the price of lithium rise uh, a lot, uh, most of the lithium was coming from uh, um, lithium resources in brines. As you know, they are mainly from uh, South America. Uh, uh, but if you go, this is in Spanish, but anyway, you can uh, understand that uh, all this uh, lithium that is being mined all over the world in the last decades is coming mainly uh, from these uh, brines and this causes problems to the local people. Uh, they have problems related with the, the underground water that they, they have no access. So we are um, using lithium that is coming from all over the world. In this case, before two years ago, it was mainly from um, brines, but the, at the moment is coming mostly from uh, lithium pegmatites from mainly Australia. And uh, we decided to use the case of uh, Portugal because there's a lot of resources that are being developed since my PhD. Uh, 2000, there was a lot um, of new discoveries that uh, at that moment they were used to get uh, material for the ceramic and glass industry. So raw material for the ceramic and glass industry uh, at that moment. But now there, there's some interest in, uh, like in Australia, that uh, some of these resources, they can be mined for lithium to be used on, um, in the batteries like uh, lithium hydroxide and lithium uh, carbonide. And um, there are always geoethics related with uh, all this. You can see in this cross section that was taken by the, from the webpage of the Savannah Resources that uh, there's, during the exploration, there's the possibility of propose different approaches to the mining. So they, they have a, a, a proposal that there's an open pit one, one open pit at stage two. And this is a proposal. This uh, vein that you can see here, it's proposed to be mined by uh, open pit, but maybe uh, it's not possible. Maybe it's important to do underground mining after 50 meters, 80 meters of open pit, you need to go in underground. So we decide to um, take all these in, in account and make some um, studies in order to understand the, the near future. And uh, what uh, we felt from the first year of research, because we are doing uh, uh, questionnaires to the local people and uh, doing some research on this, the Europeans seems to think that uh, should the mining be operated only on developing and third world countries and not mined in the first world countries or not mined at all. Um, and this, of course, is uh, a trouble for the geoethics because, uh, well, we can discuss this later. So how can society evolve towards a more sustainable way of life where resources are consumed sparsely if most citizens are not aware on the raw material cost of their consumption habits? 
Um, it's why we are uh, planning a lot of different uh, um, conferences and visits to schools because we believe that only if we explain from the, let's say, primary school to the um, university how much is involved in each material that they are using all the day from the, the, the time that they wake up until the time that they, they go to bed again. It's amazing the amount of uh, uh, different raw materials that they need and we need to understand them. So I promised that I was really using only 10 minutes. And uh, so for me, geoscience education is the answer for a sustainable uh, role because only if the people really understand what uh, are uh, the implications of their use is uh, possible that uh, we make the right decisions. If we do exploration and we discover something, uh, we need to decide after this discovery if we should be mining and uh, if it should be open pit mining, if it should be underground mining, underground mining. So it's something that uh, needs to be uh, really discussed after uh, the, the exploration. And okay, thank you. And uh, this image is from Northern Portugal. And what you can see in the middle, it's not uh, a lithium mine, it's a uh, raw material uh, ceramic and glass, well, raw material um, mine for the ceramic and the glass industry. And of course it has lithium. And uh, I know that it's a nice landscape and you can see here, a, 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 let's say a, an area with um, open pit. But some of these, uh, I finish with this, some of this raw material that was uh, coming from here, it was in the plates that most of the people, in most of the people, some of the people um, uh, eat it today in, uh, in, the, in, the, in their plates, the, the food that they get on these ceramics. Okay, thanks for all. Fantastic. Um, thank you very, very much, Alexander Obrigada, um, for your brilliant presentation that you put together so quickly. Um, now, I don't know if Catriona is still with us um, because she was asking questions that are very, very much related to your second last slide that you had there with regards to this conundrum within Europe. Um, so it's a case of do we want mining within our boundaries? Um, or do we want it all to come from somewhere else? You know, what, what is the, the solution here? And again, we've got some chatter going on with regards to the self-chosen ignorance regarding the sources of materials of first, first world consumers. Um, so I think that you've got an awful lot of people who are agreeing um, with you through the chatter, et cetera, and some really good discussion that you have sparked there. Um, is, there, is there something with regards to the education and the awareness around geoscience and where all of those raw materials come from? So where do these rocks come from to be turned into something like one of these? Um, do you have any suggestions for resources that we can go and look at or um, any links that we should go and look at to, to educate, better educate both ourselves, but also help us when we're trying to communicate with other people? Uh, in the, the Erasmus project called the uh, Goal, we put uh, some uh, geological education, well, some uh, educational resources uh, in order to uh, let the schools get the material well informed uh, about uh, the implications and uh, the way that we get the, the material. I think that the, this is. Uh, uh, available on the um, abstract that uh, is in your uh, um, web page. So we started uh, one year ago and we are dealing with teachers to help us on uh, get the best uh, educational materials in order that they can be used in the classroom to explain and uh, we choose the example of lithium because most of the people are um, use it to listen about this word 
and uh, the um, the people normally they don't associate with the element they associate with the batteries and they don't even imagine that uh, they are related the rock with the something that they use all all day in the smartphone so we're gonna use this example and these educational resources are on the web page of the Erasmus uh, project. Sorry, brilliant, thank you very much for that. And I think this is something here where I know that uh, we still have on the line a, a wide array of individuals who at their fingertips have some brilliant resources that can help with this communication and with this sharing. Um, so please do feel free to send through those links to Rose and myself and we'll post them on the website. And I think maybe Alexander, just to, to um, add to what you were saying there, if I quickly share my screen, um, many of you will have seen this poster before. This is from the Geological Society. Um, and this is one of the, the many educational bits of um, information they put together. And as you can see here, this is where geoscience as a whole is absolutely crucial for the future um, and uh, key aspects with regards to human beings as a whole. So I'm sure you've already seen this one, Alexander, have you? Yeah. yeah. And all of the other resources. And it was translated to Portuguese already for someone from our geological society, yeah. Fantastic, or beleza, as some people might <laughs> say. You've now exhausted my Portuguese, by the way. <laughs> Um, so, so with that, I think a um, massive thank you to yourself, Alexander, a big round of applause to yourself um, you. and to say thank you very much to you. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to gallery view so you can see all of the lovely faces of our brilliant speakers who have spoken to us this afternoon um, and contributed their wisdom, their thoughts, their ideas and their challenges. So the conversation this afternoon, it wasn't all Nutella and it wasn't all broccoli. Monica, I'm going to use that for a while now. Um, this, this was a case here where we learned from the likes of Andrew. Um, it, we're not running out of this stuff. That is not the critical issue here. We're not running out of these key elements. Actually, there are some other much bigger risks that we need to be able to deal with and focus on first. Um, at least I think that was your message, Andrew. I don't think you had any passion behind that. No, this is sarcasm, by the way. Um, so brilliant. Thank you very much from yourself, Andrew. Um, and then from, from Richard, the ins and outs with regards to Cobalt. And I have to say, I'm greatly looking forward to when we do actually be, we are able to actually mine, sustainably mine all of those seafloor nodules and harvest all of the lovely bits and pieces that sit in there. And we've been talking about it for a long time. Surely we should be able to bring it to bear in the near future. Um, I'm going to skip over um, those lovely ladies who are keeping their video cameras off just in case they're in the middle of their supper or something like that. But also we heard from Norm um, and where he proposed some new ideas with regards to how should we actually design our mind. And I think Norm, some of what you were saying links in really nicely to what Zach and Aidan were saying this morning about when we're trying to look at the value of these assets, do we look at the whole value? Um, and I've certainly got lots of questions for you around when we're trying to value a project and the age old problems with using things like net present value and all of that kind of stuff, which doesn't actually allow you to see the full extent, the full life of that asset and also bring in some of those other factors as well. Um, a massive thank you as well to Jess. Um, who has been there beavering away and recording um, the salient points from what we've been saying. Um, and uh, so Jess will be posting a blog or a summary of what we've spoken about um, this afternoon. Um, and as ever, a massive, massive thank you to Rose, who has kept the show on the road um, and managed to keep us all going. So absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much, Rose. Look, we're all, we're all applauding you. We're all applauding you. Yes, I know, it's so embarrassing. Um, take it, take the applause. Um, so with this, ladies and gentlemen, um, of course, we, we're not there yet. We still have lots more glorious talks for you tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow morning, we kick off as ever, bright and early at eight o'clock UK time. 
And we're going to be joined by Ivy Chen from Australia. And she's going to be sharing some insight with regards to how the Australians incorporate environment, social and governance into the geological reporting code. So to JORC. So for those of you, those of us who love the world of geology. So Ivy's going to be talking to us about JORC. We're then going to be joined by a huge array of other fantastic individuals. And we're going to be looking at everything from gold fingerprinting. We're going to be looking at, again, more responsible sourcing of minerals. It's obviously a theme that's coming through with regards to this. Um, we're going to be looking at carbon after COVID. And I think we've all seen lots of articles talking about carbon, et cetera, um, and how COVID may be helping all of these issues with regards to climate change, but then what happens after we emerge from the COVID crisis. Um, then we're gonna be hearing from Ima Didi um, talking about waste not, want not, the advantages of understanding metal budgets and alternative resources. Um, and then we come back to the world of lithium again, and Lucy Crane, from Cornish Lithium is going to be talking about building responsible supply chains and an example from one of the lithium projects that we have here in the UK. Um, then we're going to hop across to Europe, not that the UK isn't in Europe. I almost mentioned that B word. It would be wonderful if we could get through a conference in the UK or has been hosted in the UK without mentioning that word that begins with B, so I won't mention it. Um, but Mark Racovides um, from Euromines is going to talk about lessons in the new normal, so mining Europe with regards to Europe's needs um, and then we're going to finish off the session tomorrow morning bear in mind there's another one tomorrow afternoon with the wonderful Ruth Allington um, who's going to be talking about the value um, of multidisciplinary risk assessments through dialogue and joined up thinking um, and her talk is also called mind the gaps so plural so with that ladies and gentlemen uh, my my little head is buzzing with ideas and excitement I hope you guys have taken away some fantastic learning and challenges and aha moments. Um, so with that, have a lovely evening, stay safe and see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much.